In our previous video, we had input some basic components into Roxim, the nose cone, the body tube, and the fins. Now we want to start adding the internal components, and we're going to start with the engine mount. Um, so the first part that we're going to use is the engine mount tube, and that's an inside tube. So if you go up here to Roxim, uh, we're going to attach it to the body tube, just like the fins are attached to the body tube. So highlight the body tube, and then come over here to the right and find inside tube. Click that, and again, it brings up a database of parts. Uh, I'm going to select an 18 millimeter tube and click OK. Okay, so here's my editor screen for the body tube. And you can see the body tube is highlighted in red right now, uh, but it's too long. Um, so uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name of this. And that's always a good thing to do in Roxem is to give every part a distinct name so that when you go to look for it, you can find it easily. If everything is named body tube, body tube, body tube, you're going to be clicking for a lot on, long time to find the right tube. Uh, so I'm going to change this one to engine mount tube. Um, and it's already, because we chose from the database, it's already selected the outside diameter, inside diameter. And the only thing we need to do is adjust the length. Uh, this particular tube is two and three quarter inches long. You can measure it if you have a different length. I'm just going to type it in. Hit tab. Uh, right now it's at the front of the tube. I'm going to change it to reference point being the base of the part. Um, and I always do that because if I extend the length of the body tube, this tube will move with it. Um, so I'm going to make it I'm slide it all the way to the back right now. And right now it's at zero. When I design rockets myself, I like the tube to hang out approximately three eighths to a half of an inch. So 0.375 to 0.5 inches. So I'm just going to type in 0.5 inches, and, and for here in Roxim, we can make this a negative number. So if I make it a, the location a negative 0.5, and hit tab, watch the location here at the back of the rocket. It just slides back out the back of the tube. Um, I'm going to check this box that says this is a motor mount, and this is important because Roxim needs to know where the engines are going to be placed. And... By doing that, it now knows that this is the tube where I'm going to stick rocket engines in. And you'll also notice there's a two buttons here, load an engine and unload engine. And the reason for this is when we design rockets, we always want to make sure that the rocket is stable. And the definition of stability is the center of gravity has to be in front of the center of pressure. Right now, we're, we're seeing the center of gravity here and the center of pressure back here. Um, and, you know, if I take this tube and you can kind of estimate it, you know, I'm, I'm pretty close. I'm just balancing it on my finger here. And that's approximately, you know, where you're seeing it here on the screen on the computer. That's the center of gravity. The center of pressure is where the aerodynamic forces balance. Uh, but what happens is if, if you move the center of gravity back by putting more weight in the back, it could be unstable. And the worst case is at right at launch, when you have a big heavy rocket motor in there that's full of propellant. That's as heavy as the rocket's ever gonna be. So we wanna load an engine in and see where that center of gravity moves. Uh, so I'm gonna click on load an engine, and I always wanna load in a heavy engine. And I know C6s are the heaviest engines there are because they're filled up all the way to the top with propellant. So I'm going to choose an Estes C6 engine. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Estes engine C6. Uh, the delay doesn't matter at this point. Um, I'll just choose a 7 and click OK. And you can see here in the back of the rocket that the engine is now installed. And the center of gravity, which used to be up here towards the nose, has now shifted back. But it's still in front of the center of pressure, so we're still OK. This is still a stable margin stable rocket and has a margin of stability of 2.43 inches. Okay, um, the next thing we need to do is, you know, right now, the way we have this designed is just a tube kind of inside the back, but you can see without rings, it, 
it wants to fall off to one side. So we have to put in centering rings and that's the purpose of the centering rings is to center them all up. So first I'm going to click OK here on my design. Um, and now I need to highlight which tubes the centering rings are going to be attached. So I'm going to attach them to the body tube again, just like we did the engine mount. And then come over here to the parts available and I'm going to select centering ring, click on that. Again, it brings up the database. For now, um, I'm going to just cancel out of that because I want to show you one of the unique features of RockSim. Uh, so we're canceling out of that. Here's the editor screen. Again, every screen can be resized. So I'll make it bigger here so you can see. Uh, and I'll also expand it up as big as possible so you can see what's going on. Uh, there's a little checkbox here that says autom automatically calculate known values. And what it's going to calculate is the inside diameter and the outside diameter. Um, right now it's already pre-calculated the outside diameter at 1.28 inches. And so that's this tube right here. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's a kind of a greenish, yellowish line right here. That's the current position of the centering ring. It's at a location of zero inches and it's referenced from the front of the owning part. Since we attached it to the tube, it's reference from the front of the tube. Um, let me give you give it some thickness here so you can see what's going on. I'll just make it a quarter of an inch. You can see it's 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 a little bit thicker. Let me change the color here to red so you can really see that centering ring. Okay, so now we have a red centering ring up here. And I'm going to go back to the general tab and I'm going to change the location. I'm going to slide it back and nothing's happening. Now, I want you to watch this inside diameter. Nothing happens until we move over to the top of that engine mount tube. So I'm getting really close and now as soon as I go over the top of it, it automatically calculates the inside diameter of that centering ring. So this is a fast, easy trick to design rockets to make designing go faster. So now we just need to actually put it into the location of the actual ring. Um, there's usually two rings in a rocket. Uh, I'm going to put this first one here right at the front of this of the motor mount tube. The best place for rings is to make sure that everything is centered. Um, like like you're going to have two rings in there. So if you put this is a, this is a design trick. This is um, this is more to do with designing rockets than rocks in. Um, if you put your rings close together, it's possible that your ring might rotate inside the tube. As soon as you spread them apart, there's less likely a chance to rotate, especially if they're sloppy, if, if the fit is really loose inside the tube. The best position is all the way at the at both ends. So this is going to cause the less rotation. Um, so that's why I always want to put my one ring right at the front of this of the motor mount tube right here. Um, and the material, I'm going to change this to paper. Cardstock and paper are, are pretty similar. Um, and it gives me a component mass over here of 3.9 grams, somewhere in that area. Um, the rocket is still stable, um, even though we've added more weight to the back. The weight of a centering ring is not that great. Um, the colors, I, like I always do, I always change the colors. Um, I'll just leave it here for right now. And we're going to click OK. So now I got a centering ring um, and I need to add a second centering ring. So this time, instead of going through that process again, I'm going to do a copy paste. So that way it, it, it's a little bit quicker. Um, and to do that, you first highlight the ring and then you can go to the edit menu and click copy. Uh, another shortcut is you can right click using, if you have a three button mouse, you can right click on the centering ring and it brings up this context menu and it's, you can copy from here. Um, and then you need to uh, reattach it to somewhere in the tube. So I can't attach a centering ring to a centering ring. Uh, as you can see, it's, a, it's grayed out over here, the centering ring. Um, so I need a part to attach it to. So I have to highlight the body tube. And now I can attach the centering ring. So I can right click again. And this time I'm going to paste. And you can see now I got two centering rings. And if you look down here on the screen, I'm going to zoom in again. Um, use the right click on your mouse to zoom in. 
select zoom in and then you can click and drag and you can see you know this view bigger so you can see what's going on back here um, you're only seeing one ring because both rings are identical they're positioned in the same spot so I need to move them so I'm going to move one of these rings I'm going to double click on it to edit it and I'm going to change the location and I'm also going to change from where it's referenced again I always reference from the bottom of the part so that if I change the length of that tube this ring will follow with it it will go with it um, so now I'm going to move the location and I'm moving it back and remember I said before you'll want them as far apart as possible but there is a caveat on the rear ring um, remember this tube sticks out a half of an inch from the rocket so the furthest back I could go would be right here but I also like to move them recess them into the tube a little bit probably like a, a, a quarter of an inch 0.25 inches or 12 millimeters if you're using metric so it's recessed in the back a little bit and I'll explain that to you in just a bit why I do that um, so I'm just going to recess it so you can see back here if I zoom in that back ring is recessed from the end of the tube and I'm also going to change the name of this I'm going to call it the aft ring to distinguish it from that front center ring remember again always call your parts different items uh, because otherwise it's hard to tell them apart and I'm going to think I'll change the name of this front centering ring to call it the front centering ring and I'll just click on it and I'm going to click a second time and you got to space your clicks far apart if you double click it's going to edit it but if you click have a little bit of pause and then click it again now you can change the name of the part so I'm going to call this the forward center ring and then hit enter and now the name is changed um, okay so now we have the centering rings in uh, the next thing we need to add is this engine mount, engine hook which you can see right here this holds the engine in let me pull this ring out here um, you can see typically an engine hook would go into, into a little slot into the tube and then we there's a little notch in this ring right here and then this one go on this like that um, so now if you if you spread your rings as far apart as possible it's very hard to bend this up uh, that's why I like to recess it inward a little bit so it gives it a little bit more bendability because uh, when I put my engine in I want it to bend up but if it's too close to the end it's harder to bend that up and get the engine out I can still do it but I don't want to permanently bend that hook up because then the engine has a chance of coming out so I want a little bit of a spring to it so just enough and that's why it's uh, that's why I recess it a good design tip right there uh, for that engine hook um, because it doesn't have a definite shape to it we're going to use the mass object and a mass object is anything in the rocket that doesn't have a defined shape like cylinder or a ring um, technically a parachute would be a mass object um, but you things like um, payloads anything that you're going to put inside that it's not clearly defined so first I got to figure out where I'm going to attach it and I'm going to attach it to the engine mount tube because that's where it is and then you can see over here on the right we have the mass object I'll click that and there is a engine hook in here um, you have the Estes standard size engine hook and I'm just going to click OK from that and it gives me the mass of that part um, let me oops let me resize this screen here a little bit okay so the M right here stands for mass object and again let me change that color so you can see a little bit brighter I get a purple color so here's the mass object right now it's attached to the front of the ring because that's you know that's where its reference point is um, and I'm just going to move it back so this is I kind of eyeball it here you know kind of figure out where the mass you know where this ring might balance on this tube so if I take this off and try to balance it you know, it's, it's approximately right in the middle 
So, um, so I'm eyeballing this. You don't have to be exact. Close enough is good enough. So here's about where I want it positioned in real life. So I'll just go over here in my drawing on Roxim and just kind of, kind of move it until it's kind of in that same approximate location. That's good enough. Um, and it's called engine hook, which is good. And I've already changed the color. It doesn't have a 3D color because Roxim won't render this because it doesn't have a defined shape. Um, so I'll click OK here. Um, and then I'm going to zoom out to the original. And here we have our rocket. Um, so that's going to be where I'm going to leave off this video. And in the next video, we'll start adding the, the parachute to this rocket design. Oh, one other thing that I want to do before I want to do, I want to go back and change my fins. Um, I want to add a through the wall fin tab. Now, if you're not familiar with a th through the wall fin tab, let me, let me kind of show you here on this tube. Um, a lot of times people will, will cut a tab into the bottom of the fin so that it, it will go through the tube and attach like this. And that gives it greater strength because once it's glued in, we have, um, we have this tab glued to the tube and it's also glued to the outside of the tube. So there's actually two glue joints there. And that double glue joint makes these fins a lot stronger and they're a lot harder to snap off. Um, to add that fin tab, um, I'm going to go and edit the fin. So I'll double click on the fin set. And it brings up my fin editor screen. And then we're going to go to the, the tab that's called TTW. TTW stands for through the wall. So through the wall. And it gives us three measurements that we have to make. Um, the first one is the tab depth. So that's how far the tab sticks off the bottom of the fin, like right here. Um, so what ideally what we want it to, so if you look here, and if, I, if I place the fin on the tube, I want the tab depth to be perfect so that it attaches to both the outside of the tube and the inside of the tube like that. So Roxim can calculate this. So the first thing I always do is just click on calculate the fin tab depth for me. And it does that. Um, and now I need to set the offset. Or I'm going to set the length first. Oops, did I click this? OK. I, so it's telling me that for this particular rocket, the tab depth is 0.29 inches. Um, and then I can, let me zoom in here. Let me make this bigger. Zoom in. This is where that zoom in feature really comes in handy so I can actually see what's going on. Um, so now I'm going to move, change the tab offset and the tab length so that the, the tab fits right between the centering rings. Um, so first let me move the tab offset back. So by moving it back one inch, now I'm inside the ring on the front but it's hanging off the back right here, so now I need to change the length. And you can see that I, I've changed the length. Now it's a little bit forward of that back ring, but that's good. I always like to have a little bit of the fin projecting forward and backwards from the tab. Um, this makes sure that I'm perfectly aligned and gives me a double glue joint. So that's, it's, a, it's an odd looking tab on the fin, uh, but it, it works. It's gonna, it's going to be a nice, strong fin for me. Um, so that's the cool thing about Roxim is you can always go back and edit parts. You're not locked in. Um, so go ahead, go back and forward. The, the design process is iterative. That means you, you throw something out there, see what sticks to the wall, and then you tweak it a little bit later and to see if it's better. And if it's not better, then you go back and edit it again. So that's the process. You're constantly going back and forth, seeing what's going on and making adjustments until you got it perfect the way you want it. Okay, so in the next video, we're gonna start adding the inside parts like the parachute. So my name is Tim, thanks for watching, uh, and you see you in the next video.